So what happens when we're using AI for entry-level jobs or entry-level processes? How do you then gain mastery? Because if we don't replenish the seed, are we then living in the age of the last experts uh, or the last uh, masters? I just have one more question. For, I actually have a lot of questions, but I will just ask one more question, and then we're going to get to the uh, audience questions. Oh, yeah. um, why is any of this inevitable? You know, we've been talking about this for a year. It's the AI revolution. AI is going to be in everything, all your products, in your grocery store, in your fridge. Uh, why, why do we need it? So to me, I don't subscribe to technological determinism because I always think of human uh, agency, right? And so I don't think AI is inevitable in the way that any technology is inevitable, but I do think there is momentum, yeah. right? And there is inertia. And what I fear is the stories we talk about and tell ourselves with AI and its capabilities. For example, I think of this nonprofit, uh, NEDA, National Eating Disorder um, Association. And so I think it was May 20th, yeah, May 25th, I see a headline. Uh, their workers had unionized, management said no. So they fire the workers who were doing uh, the chat, kind of call in for help, and they replaced it with a chat bot. The chatbot was then uh, giving advice that's known to make eating disorders worse. Hmm. And so then the next headline, I don't think it was even a week, it was like maybe May 27th, right? May 25th, chatbot online. May 27th, chatbot offline, right? <laughs> but what I'm getting at here is it wasn't the AI's capability, it was the stories we were telling ourselves about the AI's capabilities. Mm -hmm. And it also makes me think of this notion I've been thinking of, the apprentice gap. So what happens when we're using AI for entry-level jobs or entry-level processes? How do you then gain mastery? How do you build your professional calluses? I was in Rolling Stone uh, a little while ago, and that. so I was inspired to go get a guitar, right? So I got my guitar. I was really excited. My Les Paul Appetite Verse Slash. Anyways, for those who know, you know. And as I was playing it, I realized, oh, my calluses from other hats when I wasn't always an AI researcher, right? Those calluses were still there. And that's when I start thinking about professional uh, calluses, because if we don't replenish the seed, are we then living in the age of the last experts uh, or the last uh, masters? And so that's where it's not even just as AI going to expand or evolve that, yes, because we are expanding and we are evolving as um, just people. But it's the narratives we tell ourselves and who shapes those narratives, because those beliefs then feel the type of AI systems we create. Sam, why is AI inevitable? It's, it's not. It's not. Um, it is if people find it useful and if people like the new vision of society, the narrative and the actual results that we deliver more than the alternative. But I, I am not a believer in technological determinism either. If AI can help people have better lives, it'll happen because um, we all kind of want that. And like, I do believe in the magic of our society to get successively there over time. Uh, and if it doesn't, you know, I won't say all of AI won't happen, but certain parts of AI won't happen. And we'll just, people will decide they don't want that or society will decide we collectively don't want that. The future happens because people work hard to invent it and we learn and iterate along the way and nothing has to happen or is, you know, has like a divine right to happen. I think one piece I think about is who gets to decide what happens and who has the power to shape what is adopted, right? And so sitting in a privileged position, it can be easier to say, we don't want that. And then when we think about the X-coded, right, certainly those who are 
being harmed uh, by AI systems, if you're denied housing because of a tenant screening algorithm, if you're fired or you don't get promoted because your company adopted an AI system, oftentimes you don't even know the coded gaze is at work. The example with coding in a white mask, part of why it was effective was because it was totally. visible in that way. But there are so many ways in which those who have power can adopt AI tools uh, behind closed doors, unless if we have measures, right, and laws and legislation uh, that require, one, the tools are fit for purpose in the first place. And we're not just experimenting and using people as guinea pigs when we're talking about life opportunities. And that took me a while to come to, again, the kid who wanted to build robots and maybe deal with people sometimes, right? But not all the time. And then uh, understanding the responsibility I had as somebody within the tech space and then later as an academic because so many people don't have access to make decisions about these tools. Facial recognition block, we're here to make a planet. Can't nobody stop. Everyone turn on your facial recognition block, we're here to make a planet. Can't nobody stop. Everyone turn on your facial recognition block, we're here to make a planet. Can't nobody stop. Everyone turn on your